Alice Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, April 25th. Okay, so today we are going to see the moon in Scorpio kind of carry us throughout the course of the day, the majority of the day anyways. We will see the moon in Scorpio go void, of course, at 7.18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're shifting into Sag energy at 9.38 p.m. So let's talk about the transition from Scorpio energy to Sag energy, because first of all, it's always a welcomed one. As you know, we just had the full moon in Scorpio, which intensified things. It pressurized us in our inner realms in order to make the change, make the transformation into our higher selves. This was boss up energy. Yeah, that Scorpio energy being a fixed water sign definitely looked to kind of put us in a different level of awareness so that we could see the blockages, the self sabotage, the bad habits preventing us blocking us, keeping us from actually evolving, from actually growing. Even if we didn't have that full moon in Scorpio, just the moon in Scorpio period is very intense. We do a lot of shadow work. We have to sit in the darkness in order to actually appreciate the light from a different level of awareness. The Sag energy holds that light. It's like we see the light at the end of the very dark tunnel that we always walk through in Scorpio energy. That Sag energy is like holding a torch for us to get out of this darkness. And as we emerge and kind of stand in this bigger, broader perspective and light, a new truth, a new perspective, a new realization, a new path, a new awareness actually takes over. That Sag energy is a mutable fire sign. So mutable signs really help us to see things from a different angle, a different perspective. We are kind of processing things from a different level of awareness, which means that a new focus, a new dream, a new vision, a new goal is now in our peripheral. So we're definitely excited to shift into the Sag energy. Again, Jupiter rules over the Sag energy. Jupiter is like the hype girl of the Zodiac. So we become a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more confident than we were in the previous state, because of course, in the previous state in Scorpio energy, we had to do the shadow work. We had to sit in the darkness. We had to sit in the funk. And because of this, we've released, we've purged, we've cleansed. And now we're leveling up to see why a deeper meaning, deeper truth, why we had to go through all of that, what we're actually doing with that realization, with that awareness, how we are changing, how we are transforming, how we are actually opening up our mind to something different. So it's definitely going to be a very welcome transit. However, we have a lot going on here today, 13 different aspects, so relatively busy day in the cosmos. Um, 12 of those aspects are going to involve the moon. So it's an emotional refinement kind of day. The only one that doesn't involve the moon is Mercury and Mercury is stationing direct. So of course there is an astral forecast that I put out for this particular energy shift. If you've downloaded your Taurus season e-guide, which I definitely recommend you do, you should be flipping to this particular page of where the energy is going to shift and really capture what's going on for you, what you're focused on, where your mental plane is at, what is asking for your time, your energy, your attention, because we are going to have major revelations, major perspective shifts over the next couple of weeks as Mercury kind of, you know, gets back up full speed and we move into May. So definitely make sure that you've listened to that forecast, that you've done the work. If you have the guides and you're actually, you know, applying it to your own life and to your own chart, because this is where we get focused. This is where we get those hidden details. This is where we get a bigger, broader perspective. So of course, with all of those energies kind of pressurizing us, it's going to be a day where we take one step forward in realizations and in stabilizing our inner realm. And then of course, we're going to be challenged to take a couple steps back and see it from a different perspective. So definitely a lot going on here today. We kick the day off with the moon in Scorpio energy, making a very positive interaction with Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer himself. He rules over the Scorpio energy. He was in his rulership over this full moon in Scorpio. And this is always going to put us in a situation where our emotions are intensified and pressurized because a major change, a major transformation is taking place. And it's starting with our mood, with our attitude. We are bossing up. There is an empowerment energy 
energy coming out of this full moon in Scorpio. We are leveling up in a lot of different ways and we start realizing where it is that we have to start taking more control, responsibility, accountability over our lives, starting with our emotional reactions to the world around us. We should not be reacting at this point. We should be acting as the observer. We are leveling up in our energies in order to be able to stabilize and not have external influences throw us off of our game. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Chiron. So again, as I previously mentioned, we are going to be in this seesaw energy, this tug of war energy, one step forward, two steps back type of deal. We are kicking things off with this tough interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So we're definitely going to be sitting in the darkness. So we had that empowerment energy with Pluto. Now we're stepping back. Now we're having an identity crisis. We're realizing where this new version of self wants to take charge, wants to take lead. However, a lot of the shadow aspects of ourselves that should have been illuminated to us under that full moon in Scorpio coming out to play, coming out to try and talk us out of of growth, of healing, of evolvement. Again, a fixed water sign. We do not like to change. We like to hold on, even if it means kind of, you know, creating self-sabotage for ourselves. That was one of the main topics and themes that we should have been addressing under that full moon in Scorpio. If you still want to do a deep dive, please subscribe to that moon guide. It was a very deep, very intense dissection of that shadow work. So the moon interacting with Chiron, we're bringing up all the wounds. We're not feeling safe. We're not feeling secure. We're not feeling empowered. We're not feeling bossed up. Instead, we are focused on all of the aspects preventing us from doing just that. We sit in that funk for just a sec because again, we have to sit in the darkness in order to truly empower ourselves to push ourselves into the light. And again, light is just merely knowledge and information. So you have to sit in the funk of your ego in order to see the greater, grander, let's call it plan to evolve, to become more aware, to become more enlightened. So then we have the moon in Scorpio energy making a positive interaction first with the North Node, then with Mercury. The North Node is in Aries energy. Mercury is retrograde in Aries energy. The North Node and Mercury and Chiron, side note, again, moon guide, dissect the aspects, see where they're really relating in your chart. But the moon interacting with the North Node and then with Mercury is definitely putting us in a better situation, a better mood, a better attitude to see the path forward, to feel like we are well equipped, well prepared to be traveling in a new direction. We are starting to see again from sitting in the earlier funk where it is that we do have an opportunity to grow, to boss up, to be more aware, to be more enlightened, to have more power, to have more control. But of course, this is all a mental plane game. This is where Mercury comes in. Mercury is retrograde in this Aries energy, just hours away from going direct at this point, which means that there's a lot of pressure to flipping the script, flipping the narrative, the way that we were once sitting in a negative ass narrative and kind of looking at ourselves through a darker lens. We're trying to enlighten ourselves. We're trying to boss up. We're trying to lighten the vibe. We're trying to see the positives instead of all of the negatives. Now, here's where things get interesting. The moon and Scorpio going to come up to directly oppose and sit across from first Uranus, then Jupiter, both of them in Taurus energy. Of course, they're still very closely sitting together, working together. They just had their conjunction on the 20th at that 21 degree. They were a pivotal point partnership, if you will, under this full moon in Scorpio, definitely showing us where it is that a major ripple effect, a growth of healing, of repairment, of advancement, of a abundance is definitely pushing us in a new path, in a new direction. However, in opposition, a conflict, if you will, we're sitting across the table and on one side is the moon and Scorpio. On the other side is Uranus and Jupiter. This is going to highlight the power struggle that we're currently sitting in, especially in our inner realm, trying to gain bigger, broader perspectives, trying to gain deeper insight, trying to understand the path, the plan, the strategy that we should be, you know, putting together at this point in order to advance ourselves on a path that is going to lead us into a new truth, new purpose, new mission, new project, new goals, new visions, the whole kit and caboodle. Of course, 
this is a struggle because there's an opposition here. We're in conflict. We're not on the same page here. And so there is this resistance because again, fixed water sign, fixed energy does not like to change. Even though we've been trying to pray for the change and create the change, as soon as opportunity knocks, suddenly we get cold feet and we're questioning on whether it is that we want to grow, we want to improve at all. So this particular energy isn't going to feel very good. It's very edgy, very kind of touchy, very rebellious, if you will. It could go so pretty quick. So you want to keep yourself in check, especially in conversations, because of course, Mercury is really pressurizing our mental plane, our ability to articulate and communicate effectively because at 8.49 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury is going to station direct. So this is like this, I'm going to call it central nervous system zap. This is anxiety. This is excitement. This is just like a surge of energy coming in from that Uranian Jupiter opposition to the moon. And then Mercury, he shifts gears and suddenly we're just semi-confused, but yet we're eager to jump into something, but we don't know what that is yet, but we want to kind of make moves and take action, but we don't know what to take action and make moves upon. And so everything again is kind of pressurized. There's like a tug of war going on in our lives because of this energy shift. Try to be patient. Try to step back, try to act as the observer, try to limit your energy and interactions with other people until this energy stabilizes. We do not want to make any kind of rash decisions. We don't want to choose anything. We don't want to commit to anything. We don't want to really attach ourselves to anything until this energy stabilizes. And if you do, and if you have no choice but to, please understand that you're going to be doing the hokey pokey with moving kind of all around in different spaces for the next kind of two weeks in that post shadow period in order to actually get an alignment. So again, if you choose, if you decide, if you commit, if you attach, then suddenly things aren't going to go so well. You're going to have some conflict there and then you're going to have to clean up the mess, so to speak, before you're going to be freed up to actually move on to actually move forward. The moon in Scorpio is then going to make a very tough interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Aries energy. This is not going to feel good on the heart space. We're definitely going to move into a darker mood, a darker attitude. We are feeling the struggle between what it is that we know that we want to do, that we need to do, that we have to do, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. And again, another cautionary note, avoid these kind of, you know, open hearted conversations like the plague at this point and you're going to have those dark force entities kind of trigger and activate you out in your external realm and there is going to be an impulse there is going to be an urgency to want to get some things off of your chest and you should step back and keep that pretty little mouth shut you are going to create a shit show in your relationship dynamics if you speak out if you speak in turn under this very chaotic and unstable energy influence the moon in Scorpio then going to try and beautiful interaction with Mars. Mars co-rules over the Scorpio energy. He is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our action, our passion, even our anger. He is in Pisces energy. This is what gives us our trine. This is water on water action. Not only is this going to highlight where it is that we have to kind of cleanse ourselves, purify ourselves from some of those gunky type of energies that we picked up late, earlier in the day, I should say. Um, Mars is in this Pisces energy to try to get aligned with a bigger mission, bigger truth, bigger meaning, bigger purpose in life trying to get spiritually acclimated, if you will. Uh, he is preparing to move into his rulership here towards the end of the month, which is going to be that green light go ahead that we've all been waiting for very anxiously, um, but he ain't there yet. And so this water energy definitely going to pressurize a change, a transformation in our inner realm where our emotions, where our intuition is concerned. This is a trine. So this is a beautiful interaction. It's definitely going to heighten our awareness, our intuition. It's going to download us with vision, with goals, with dreams that we're able to understand just a tiny little bit at this particular point in time. We do need Mercury kind of get his stuff together before it's going to make a whole hell of a lot of sense. However, this is excitement. This is passion. This is desire. This is motivation. This is a better mood a better attitude for us to kind of get focused on what it is that we want to bring to life. 
The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron. You'll remember earlier in the day, wasn't so happy, wasn't such a great interaction. We definitely highlighted the wounds, but this is a positive interaction, which means that we're highlighting the healed parts. We're highlighting, especially going back throughout the day, recognizing where it is that the old version of self would have lost their shit and kind of created a little bit more of a shit show than there needs to be. We didn't do that. We grew, we took the higher road. We understood what was coming at us. We understood our options. We made better decisions. And therefore, we are starting to lean more into this new version of self, this healed version of self, this stronger, more powerful, more in control version of self that, of course, has us acting as the observer instead of reacting from ego. The moon is going to trine Neptune. So this is the last aspect that the moon and Scorpio is going to make before going void, of course. And again, this is 7, 18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon trining Neptune is putting us in a renewal state where our soul and our spirit is starting to understand the change, the transformation that we just went through, the shadow parts of self that we just released, the understanding of the, let's call it intuitive calling that we are now trying to actually pursue. This is a good time to really see that our intuition is stronger now than ever, where it is that new creative force energy finally starting to infiltrate into our mind space, into our heart space with a little bit more clarity than previous in order for us to understand what it is now that we need to do, what it is that we need to pursue. Again, when the moon goes void, things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable. We want to avoid anchoring, attaching, connecting while the moon is void. It's a very short period of time this time around, 9.38 p.m. We shift into that Sag energy. About an hour later, the moon in Sag is going to make an awkward interaction with the North Node first and then Mercury second. This time, Mercury will be direct. So the moon and Sag, first of all, we're all over the place. We're very unfocused. We're dreaming big dreams. We're kind of jumping around to all the different options. We have our hand and multiple pies, so to speak. But we are happy-go-lucky. We are trying to build in our mood and our attitude. We're trying to restore the positive narrative, the confidence, the clarity. Uh, the moon's interaction with the North Node, first and foremost, puts us on a path to think about what it is that we want to do when moving forward. That North Node, again, reminder, is our soul path. It's our soul mission. It's the path that we need to get on in order to reach potential points in our soul's evolution. This is new truth, new mission, new purpose, new quest, new adventure. And the moon in Sag is all about adventure. What's next? What do we want to learn? Where are we going to go? Where can we grow? What can we kind of, let's call it integrate? What can we put into practice? We just went through a very, let's call it intense growth spurt in our inner realm of emotion and spirituality. And now we're trying to see what it is that we're being called to do, being called to pursue. The moon's interaction with Mercury of course, is trying to get our heart and our head on the same page, but I'm going to say no luck there just because, of course, Mercury needs a little bit of time to stabilize. Uh, he just went direct just hours ago. And so we aren't thinking clearly and we aren't seeing things in the right kind of light and we aren't able to understand the downloads as of yet. And we're not able to even understand what the distance is between our heart and head. We don't even know that we're on different pages at this point. We need time to adjust. So there is this overwhelming pressure, let's say, to kind of get the party started, but we're not time. We're not there yet. It, it, we need a little bit more time to kind of prepare for the party, if you will, making sure that our to-do list, everything got checked off, if you will, and that we have everything that we need to actually have said party. And of course, that party that I'm talking about is the path, the plan, the strategy that we're going to be taking action upon as we blaze ourselves into May.